Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, our teacher, as we dive into the Bible today, we ask you to awaken our hearts, expand our minds, and shape our identity today. Jesus, may we learn to be more like you. Amen. So today we're in the sixth week in the Bible series, and this week we're the, exploring the question of how can we experience community as we look at Holy Spirit and community together. And throughout this series, we've been looking at this overarching story of the Bible, seeing how it all fits together, how it offers a coherent story, and how that story is relevant to our lives today. And each week we've had a theme, and if we have all were here together, I'd probably quiz you and see who could remember what our themes have been. <clears throat> but let's review them together. We started with origins and meaning, then we looked at exodus and freedom, exile and peace, and all of that was focused in the Old Testament. And then last week we moved into the New Testament as David helped us look at Messiah and love. And today we're continuing to move through that chronological story of the Bible, looking at spirit and community, looking at the role of the Holy Spirit in play, plays in community in the church. And I realize that community in some ways feels like a rather distant memory at the moment, as we've lived now under some form of restrictions due to the coronavirus for almost 11 months. The community that we were accustomed to here in church with our neighbors, with friends and family has been taken from us in its usual forms. And it's still something that we're all longing for. We're looking forward to those days when we'll be able to meet freely together again. In the meantime, we've gotten creative and we've stayed connected, but it's still not quite the same, is it? But as a church, both locally and globally, community is something we've tried really hard to maintain throughout the pandemic. We've worked to create opportunities for connection, for conversation online with services and with Zoom meetings. And we probably all learned some new technologies we hadn't even heard of a year ago. I'd never heard of Zoom, but now I use it almost every day. And we've also been trying to maintain community for those who aren't online because not everyone is. So reaching out to those who aren't with phone calls, with a note in the post or a knock on the door. And even though it's been challenging to maintain our church community, we've done it as best we can. And I think we've also realized in this time that whilst church is not about the building, we know it's made up of the people, we still miss being in our buildings partly because that is the place where we had the opportunity to most regularly connect with one another, to build community and to grow in faith together. We all miss those casual conversations before and after church. One of the hardest things when we were able to meet in person was that we were told we were supposed to come into church and not interact with anyone who was not from our household. It wasn't easy to do, was it, for those of you who were here? We come to church to see one another, to have community. Clearly, whoever made those guidelines doesn't really understand how church works and how vital community is to it. So we desperately miss community right now, that in-person connection with others. But fortunately, it's not entirely absent from our lives. I've been going on and on at you since I arrived about how we need to be creative and flexible in our worship. And it's true, it's still true, and even when we're back together, we need to be creative and flexible. Because it's through creativity and flexibility and persistence, we can still nourish our community of faith during this time. But the good news is we're not doing it only in our own strength. That's where the Holy Spirit comes into our conversation. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us, inspiring us, encouraging us, and sustaining us that we can maintain and develop community with God and with others, regardless of our circumstances. So we're going to look at that today, how we can have community with God and with others through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is quite a massive topic. We're narrowing in on just one aspect of the Holy Spirit's character and personality in our talk this morning. So first, let's consider community with God. 
Now, you might wonder why we had that short reading from Genesis at the beginning, and it was to make a bit of a point, because we often think about the Holy Spirit as not really coming on the scene until that reading that we had in Acts. But here in Genesis, we see that the Holy Spirit was there right from the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of, surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And it is true that throughout the whole Testament, we hear more about God the Father, Yahweh, the Lord. But as we've seen throughout our series, when we are paying attention, we will also see Jesus, and we will also see the Holy Spirit. Because the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is really the best and first example of community. Each member of the Trinity has its specific role, but also exists as one. And I won't go too deeply into that this morning, because thinking about the nature of the Trinity is a bit mind-boggling sometimes. And we need more than just a bit of a Sunday sermon. But think about that, the Trinity as an example of community, of relationship. And we have God the Father ever-present with us but perhaps sometimes feels a bit slightly other. And then we have Jesus, who came, Emmanuel, God with us, coming to earth and experiencing all the joys and challenges of human life just as we do. But it is the Holy Spirit who is with us now, the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised to his disciples and to us to take his place. He said to the disciples in John 14, verses 16 to 18, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Jesus is going to come back someday to set all things right, but in the meantime, he has left the Spirit with us. And now not just with us, but in us. When we become Christians, we are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. And so it is through the Holy Spirit living in us that we are able to feel connected with God, to have, to join into that community of the Trinity. It is through the Holy Spirit that we often experience that still, small voice of God speaking to us. It is through his Holy Spirit that we can pray without words, because the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Romans 8.26 tells us, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes with, for us with wordless groans. And isn't that good news? I don't know about you, but there are days when I feel overwhelmed to the point I don't have the words to pray. But I can take comfort in knowing that the Holy Spirit is there, interceding, maintaining that community, even when I don't have the words. So Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would come, and that is what we saw in our reading in Acts, the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit always been there, always part of the Trinity, but at this point in the history, the Holy Spirit takes center stage. The Holy Spirit shows up in dramatic and discernible ways. When you read that passage, and you can imagine for the people who were there, there's no mistaking that something quite amazing was happening. And as the Holy Spirit comes, there is a new potential for people to come together to have community. Because the Holy Spirit is a person powerful and personal. The Holy Spirit lives within us, speaks to us, represents the Father and Jesus to us. The Holy Spirit helps us pray to understand the Bible and to see how God is at work in the world. And the Holy Spirit can give us purpose and peace as well. So we can have this intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has power to change us and to transform us. But God also chooses to work through community. As much as the power of the Holy Spirit has, God uses our relationships with one another to transform us as well. God uses the community of the church to help us grow in faith. And that's why church is important. 
That's why we were not meant to be lone Christians. That is why this pandemic is so difficult for us. We need that community and that fellowship. And I'm sure we can all think of people that God has placed in our lives through the community of the church who have helped us to grow in faith, who helped us to better understand God, how he works in the world, how he works in our lives, people who encouraged us and mentored us in our faith. Who might some of those people have been in your own life? I imagine some names came to mind as I was just talking about that. When I personally reflect on my own faith journey and my journey towards ordained ministry, I'm overwhelmed with the number of people that God has put in my life along the way. Some people just for a season, some people over my entire lifetime, who have pointed me towards Jesus, who have encouraged me to grow in faith, to seek God, to go deeper. And I wouldn't be here without that community of believers. And then there's those times when we're going through a crisis. It's our church community who will come around us and support us. It's why we have e prays It's why we send out and pray for one another. And when we have something to rejoice and to celebrate, we come into church. We do that together. We share that with our church community. And as you thought of those people who have had a positive influence in your faith journey, I imagine that in the very early days of that relationship, it began with them simply making you feel accepted and loved. And then as that relationship grew, you began to feel safe enough to reveal something of yourself, your true feelings, your questions about God, your questions about faith. You felt safe to be part of the community that they offered, and they welcomed you into that community. Because God has made us for community. We are not meant to be alone. God saw that from the very beginning when he made Eve to be a companion to Adam. But the shape of community that God has intended comes not just in a relationship between two people, but perhaps even more so in the community offered by the church. And as we continue on, if you continue reading in the book of Acts, following on from our reading in Acts 1, we see how the community of the early church developed, guided by the coming of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2, beginning at verse 42, we see the characteristics of a community established with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, admittedly, some of those things, like gathering in our homes and eating together, aren't available to us at the moment. But that does not mean we have no opportunity for community. And what else do we see about how these new Christians, how this new church interacts with one another, how they build community? Well, they're devoted to one another, but also to the community, to the life of the church. We have to make choices a lot of times, especially in our day and age. There are a lot of options for us on a Sunday. There's lots of other things we could be doing or um, engaged in for ourselves or for others. But do we make a commitment to join into the community of the church? And being devoted sometimes does mean sacrifice. It might mean giving up other really good things in order to focus on the community that God has called us into. We also see that this new community shared freely with one another, not just food and drink, but they gave sacrificially to meet the needs of the church and one another. And we see that they were sincere, glad to be in community together. Sincerity is the opposite of of hypocrisy. When we are confident in our relationship with God, we can be sincere. It's through the Holy Spirit that we can take off the masks we often wear and have genuine community with one another. So as this new community began to develop, this new church, they were devoted to one another. 
They sacrificed for the community. They came together because that is what they were called to in the Holy Spirit. I think we're all recognizing that we need community more now more than ever. But we have to be creative. We have to learn how to communicate in new ways. But we can also rely on the Holy Spirit for guidance. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you discern today how you can play your part in the community of faith in this season. Who are the people that you might be able to reach out to? Who are the people that you can encourage and pray for and serve? Who might the Holy Spirit be putting on your heart today? And when we're in a space of feeling good, let's be aware and sensitive to those who may need help, because it can work both ways. Often when we have that energy to make a phone call and talk to someone, we're encouraging them, but sometimes even more I find I'm encouraged by the person that I've been able to ring. I make a phone call trying to encourage someone else and I end up feeling a lot better. But equally, there will be some of us who are really struggling and who need a listening ear or a kind word. And let's be sensitive and aware of those people. And if that's the place you find yourself in today, think about who are those people that you trust? Who are the people who have proven themselves to be part of your community that you connect with well? Who can you get in touch with and just say, I just need to have a chat? If you need help or support, do reach out and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. If we stay connected, if we're creative in how we do so, we can flourish and grow in our faith and our relationship with God, even in tough times. We might actually be able to deepen our sense of community rather than feeling separate. And as I talked about a few weeks ago, I think often these times of challenge, these times of exile when we're seeking peace, can be those times when we grow the most, when we really have to lean into God and trust in his Holy Spirit. So let's do that this week. Let's put our hope and our trust in God in his Holy Spirit who lives within us, the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us when we don't have the words to pray, the Holy Spirit who with the Father and the Son models community for us. Let's look to the Holy Spirit and enter into this community today. Let's pray together. Loving Father, I thank you for your Son and for sending your Spirit to transform us, to bring new life, new hope, and new courage. We thank you, Lord, that through your Spirit we are adopted into your family, into your community. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our lives today. And we pray that we might bear the fruits of your spirit. May the people we see and meet experience those fruits of a new character, sharing love with the unloved, showing kindness to all we meet, bringing hope into hopeless situations. Use us, Lord, both as individuals and as a community. And Jesus, we thank you for the community of believers that you have placed us in, our churches here in Wennington and Raynham. Help us to see the needs of others and to share the gifts you have given to us with one another. Help us to proclaim your good news in all situations. Empower us through your Holy Spirit <clears throat> as we join the Messiah's community and empower us to participate fully in God's mission in our community and around the world. In the name of Jesus, and in the power of the Spirit, we pray. Amen. <clears throat>